here's what we've done so far. I told you we're gonna break our units up into graphs, right? So, that's a horrible, well, we'll stay there, I don't care. So our first unit was lines, correct? Yeah. Our next unit's gonna be absolute value. So you see how we start with graphs and I tie the math into it? Yeah. Okay, like with lines, we graph lines, but then we found equations of lines, found parallel equations, perpendicular equations, we solved systems, we graphed inequalities. Okay, we solved systems of inequalities, all that tied together, correct? We're gonna do the same thing for every type of graph the rest of the year. So hopefully my goal is that you'll be able to recognize what a graph looks like just by looking at the equation or the inequality. So let's start here. I want you to graph that right now by making an XY table and graphing it, okay? I know half of you in this class still wants to have their pacifier in their mouth and wear their diapers and have them. Let's pause this. I know that when you make XY tables, you guys just want to use whole numbers and you just want to use positive numbers and you never want to use negative numbers. Well, those days are done. Okay? So you have to use negative numbers. I'll still let you use whole numbers and, or integers and their opposites, but you need to use negative Okay, here we go. So if I make an XY table, generally speaking, when I'm not doing lines, I always start something like this, and then I can adjust from there. So... If I plugged in a negative 3, what's the absolute value of a negative 3? Positive 3. Okay, let's, let's wait so we can explain things for a second. What does absolute value always do to a number? Why is that? Because it's the distance from 0. The absolute value of negative 3 actually means how far is negative 3 from 0 in a number line? It's 3. You don't have negative distances. If I drive from here to LaGrand, it's 12 miles. If I drive from LaGrand to here, it's 12 miles. If I drive it in reverse, guess what? It's still 12 miles. There's no negative distance. Okay, so that's all absolute value is, is distance. So what's the absolute value of a negative 2? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and... So if I graph this... Okay, I have 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. I have this nice V shape. Okay, just so you know, absolute values will always be straight lines like that. They're not curved. They'll always be V shape. We call it, it's either going to be peaks or valleys. Just like a parabola is either a smiley face or a frowny face, absolute value is either a valley or a peak. Peaks and valleys. Does that make sense? Now, write down the domain and range okay, of this graph. And you can just use interval notation if you want to. I don't care. Okay, long enough. Domain. I really got to get rid of this horrid color. What's the domain of this graph? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Does it keep going left and right forever? Are there any gaps along the x-axis anywhere? No. What is the range of this graph? From 0 to infinity, including 0. How many of you got that right? Okay. All right, so let's graph this then. We're going to make it a little bit harder. Okay, give me, graph it and give me the domain and range of, let's go absolute value of mm -hmm. 
graph that, please. Okay, and domain and range. I understand that it's hard to add and subtract numbers like three and two, and that makes math so difficult. I'm hoping you're picking up on the sarcasm in my voice. So if I made an XY table, and I start off here, and I plug in a negative three, what's a negative three subtract three? Negative six. Then you take the absolute value, which is what? And then you add two, what do you get? And then I plug in a negative two, and subtract three, negative five, take the absolute value is five, plus two is seven. Okay, negative one, subtract three is a negative four, take the absolute value, four, add two and get what? Six, plug in, what am I gonna get when I plug in zero? Five. So if I'm graphing this, that's not what I want. So I'm at negative three, eight, and then seven, and then six, and then five. Have I, have I either started going, changing directions yet? Nope, better keep going. If I plug in one, one subtract three is a negative two. What's the absolute value of a negative two? two. Plus two on the outside. So then I have a four, still not changed direction. Plug in two. What's two subtract three? Negative one. What's the absolute value of a negative one? one? Plus two. Three. So three. Well, I'm still going down. Plug in three. Okay, three subtract three is zero. What's the absolute value of zero? zero. Plus two. two. So I'm at two. Still in that line. Hmm, have I found my peak or valley yet? Okay, so I better keep going. I'll try four and see what happens. What's four subtract three? If I put a four in here, what's four subtract three? What's the absolute value of one? Plus two. Uh-oh. What's happening? Oh, what do you think if four is three, what do you think five is gonna be? And do you see, hmm. So you better keep going until you find your peak or valley. Now, looking at this, could you tell whether it was going to be peaks or valleys? How would you think you would know? Look out in front here. Okay, is there a negative out there? If there's no negative out there, it's going to be a valley. If there's a negative out there, it's going to be a peak. And you're going to do one here in just a second. So domain is still, guess what the domain is always going to be? Yep, unless we limit the domain. And then the range is what? What's the first y value I'm going to come to? Two. And it goes to, because if I start down here, the first y value I come to is y is two. Okay, let's do this. Let's graph this. Y equals a negative 2. X plus 1 minus 3. Okay, go to it. Okay, I'm going to show you the shortcut right now. Because no one figured it out. Anybody figured out how to find... The, so... This is called the vertex of the graph. This is called the vertex of the graph. Because doesn't it make sense if you find the vertex, it'd be pretty e first, it'd be pretty easy to graph? Because then you could just pick a, a, an x value on each side of the vertex, and then you'd be set, right? So how do I find the vertex of an absolute value problem? Anybody figure it out whatsoever? Would it just be that one number that was on each side? 
What? Nothing. <laughs> All you do is take the inside and set it equal to zero. What makes the inside zero? Negative. So when x is negative 1, I get a negative 1 plus 1 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. 0 times a negative 2 is still. And then minus 3 is. So you just found negative 1, negative 3 is the vertex. Okay, so if your vertex is at x is a negative 1, what two points do you think you could plug into your x table? Negative 2 and 0. Couldn't you go one spot each direction and that would tell you, since you know it's a V shape? So if I plug in a negative 2, a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. The absolute value of a negative 1 is what? But then I times first, so because order of operations. So a negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Subtract 3 more is a negative. So negative 2, negative 5. And if I plug in a 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. What's the absolute value of 1? You times by a negative 2. Minus 3. Ding, ding. And guess what? I have my graph. Do you see how nice and pretty, how easy that is to graph? Now, domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. Range, every time when I ask for range and you write it wrong, domain or range, again, I'm taking it completely wrong whether you have the numbers right or not. It doesn't matter whether you do domain and range, the smallest number goes first. Start low, where does this graph go to? And where does it stop? Negative. negative. Which is the smaller number, negative infinity or negative 3? Negative. So it goes first. So I go from negative infinity, and where do I stop at? And include negative 3. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you one more to graph. It's not going to be real easy. Well, I'm going to give you a few more to graph, actually. So y equals, let's go, 3 times the absolute value of 1 half x plus 2 minus 5. And graph that one, please. And give domain and range. I told you the first thing you should do is find the vertex, correct? And to find the vertex, you find out what makes the inside zero. How many of you guessed and checked until you figured out what made the inside zero? What's a much better way to figure out what makes the inside zero? Set it equal to zero. All you have to do is go 1 half x plus 2 equals zero. That's all you have to do. There's no guess and checking. Subtract 2. 1 half x equals a negative 2. Times by 2 over 1. Times by 2 over 1. x equals a negative 4. So when I take a negative 4, I plug it in. What's, I already know what, when I plug in a negative 4, what am I going to get on the inside when I plug in a negative 4? 0, because I set it equal to 0. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm correct. What's three times? Well, let's do if this is zero. What's the absolute value of zero? zero. Oh times it by three. Zero. Subtract five. Negative so now <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's see more common sense. I just told you you found the vertex. What should you do? You should pick up. <laughs> an x value on each side of the vertex. Don't you understand that? Now, if this is negative 4, this would be a negative 5, this would be a negative 3. Do I have to use those two? And I probably wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I didn't when I did this in my head. Why would I not use negative 5 and negative 3? And what did odd do? It gives me 0.5 because half of odd numbers is a 0.5, right? 
So instead of using negative 5 and negative 3, maybe I'd use negative 6 and negative 2 because then I get nice pretty numbers again. So if I plug in a negative 6, if I plug in a negative 6, what's half of a negative 6? Negative 3 plus 2. What's the absolute value of a negative 1? What's 3 times 1? Subtract 5. So at negative 6, I'm at negative 2. And then I'm going to plug in a negative 2. Half of a negative 2 is a negative 1. I add 2. I get 1. What's the, I get a positive 1. What's the absolute value of a positive 1? What's 3 times 1? Subtract 5. Guess what? I still have my graph right there. Yes? Couldn't you just count, like, see how the negative 6 is two spaces away? And then just count two spaces on the uh, you, If you want to talk about axes of symmetry, and you say, okay, I found this point, I found this point, so I can just go two points that way, I would say bless you for using common sense. Exactly. Okay. The domain is still from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is, what's the first y value I come to? Negative 5, including, oops, that's a, oops, negative 5, and it goes all the way up to infinity. But if you did it by uh, 3 and 5, you still get negative 2. So here is number 1. Y equals, let's go, one-third times the absolute value of X plus 2 oh, plus 1. Let's go F of X equals a negative 4 times the absolute value of Oh, well, let's go 3 plus x minus 2. Let's go number 3. y equals a negative 1 half times 2x plus 1. My, no, we'll go plus... Three, we'll go number four, let's go, remember give domain and range, oh, let's do this, let's throw a curveball to you and I'll end it here, y is greater than, actually I lied, I'm going to give you a different one. Y equals, let's go, a negative 6 plus 3 times the absolute value of X minus 1. And then number 5, I'm going to go Y is greater than 2 times X minus 5 minus 6. We haven't talked about inequalities, but hopefully you'll know what to do with an inequality. We'll see. Okay. I'm pause this.